Okay, today we are going to be studying alternating current, or most people just abbreviate it AC. This is going to be a series of three parts. The first part, we're going to talk about AC generation. The second part, we're going to talk about AC measurement. And the third part, we're going to talk about how different loads affect the uh, output from our AC source. So let's go to the presentation. Okay, now we're at the presentation for alternating current. And I am going to do this in three separate parts. And uh, after each part, I'd like you to uh, pause and have time to digest that material and, uh, and understand it before you go on to uh, viewing the next portion. This portion, this part one, is going to look into the generation of alternating current. So this is going to be the layout that we're going to use in this presentation. Uh, so let me uh, talk through that a little bit. In the upper left hand corner, we have a graph that is going to show our sine wave. In the lower left hand corner, we have our simple circuit that we're used to from our uh, earlier lessons. And normally we would have a battery here. Um, but I have replaced the battery with a circle that shows a sine wave in the middle of it to denote that we are talking about alternating current. And our circuit is still just a simple pure resistive load like we had in uh, some of our early DC lessons. And then over here to the right in the upper right hand corner I show two uh, views of the same thing. That's my generator and I have a 3D version of it here which might help you um, get a better understanding of what I'm trying to depict there. So on the bottom I have my uh, north pole of my magnet. On the top I have a south pole. So my magnetic field lines will be going from my north pole to my south pole or in the upward direction. And as you can see here on the right hand side I show the arrows going up from the North Pole to the South Pole. Now this is a coil of wire that is going to be rotated within this uh, magnetic field lines. And in doing so, we are going to induce a current inside that coil of wire. The coil begins here, wraps around here a whole bunch of times, and then ends right here. So this is what we're ultimately trying to induce a current in, is this coil of wire. So if I cut that coil of wire right in half, where I'm just looking at what I cut off here and here, that's what I'm depicting here. So this blue section here, if I just cut it off right there, that would be the cross section of that blue portion of my, uh, of my uh, coil. And if I follow this in and I would just have cut that right there in half, this would be the cross section of that. So this would have a whole bunch of wires in it, uh, a coil of wires that um, would ultimately have been this circular loop. <clears throat> As we rotate this in that magnetic field lines, a grouping of magnetic field lines we call magnetic flux. So we rotate it in that magnetic flux we're going to induce a current and we'll be able to use that in our circuit here. So as I uh, rotate this, um, normally you would think, well, these wires are going to get all tangled up. Well, this actually um, would be a brush <clears throat> that would be touching a slip ring. That's a little bit what I'm trying to show here. And um, this would be a brush that is touching a slip ring on um, this symbol for the source. So they're actually not going to tangle up. And then I'm showing those over here as well. So the blue side is going to be coming around this way and the red side would be coming around in this, this direction here. Okay. So let's start to actually rotate this in the field and see um, the effect. Okay, so I have turned this, if we look here, um, I have turned this 30 degrees, okay? So if this is 90 and that is zero, well, that would be 30, 60, 90. So I have come 30 degrees. 
and I've already started to induce a current in there. Okay, I started at zero. Let's go back one, just, just a minute here. I started at zero. Why am I at zero? Because my magnetic field lines, and at least at that instant, the direction that this guy is um, moving is 100% parallel to the magnetic field lines. And we know that we have to cut the magnetic field lines to be able to induce the current. And we're not cutting any field lines at that moment. So now when we rotate this 30 degrees, we are now cutting some field lines. See, this is why I've shown two um, views of the same thing is this is covering up uh, what is the magnetic field lines underneath it. So I just kind of show an arrow here and then this is the same arrow, just a little thicker. And it shows the, how the, the center line of this coil is now cutting some magnetic field lines at a 30 degree angle and is inducing a current in that coil. And so that current is being seen here with these arrows and it's, I'm showing a specific direction. Now it's important to understand how I determined that the direction of the current was going to be this direction. And for that, we're going to break away and go to the whiteboard and learn Fleming's right hand rule. So let's go to the whiteboard. Okay, now we're going to study Fleming's right hand rule. And where we apply this is whenever we bring a conductor into a magnetic field for the express purposes of inducing a current in that conductor, we can use Fleming's right hand rule to determine the direction of the current. And we're talking about conventional current here. So what Fleming discovered is if you take your uh, right hand and you put your thumb, first finger and second finger mutually perpendicular to one another, um, you can apply this rule. And what mutually perpendicular means is if my thumb is pointed up, my uh, first finger would be pointed at 90 degrees to that. Um, uh, which is perpendicular to my thumb, and my second finger would be uh, pointed mutually perpendicular to both my thumb and my first finger, or it would be pointed straight at the camera. So you would hold your hand in this fashion here. Now on the board, I have a North Pole and a South Pole of a magnet, and I have my magnetic field lines flowing from right to left, uh, because they go from the North Pole to the South Pole. And I have a cross section of a conductor coming uh, straight at the camera here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that conductor up into that magnetic field lines or magnetic flux. That's a grouping of magnetic field lines. And in uh, express purposes to induce a current in that conductor. So we want to determine which way that current is going to flow. So I'm going to hold my hand like we discussed earlier, and I am going to point my thumb in the direction that I'm moving the conductor. In this case, I'm going to be moving it up. And my index finger is going to be pointed in the lines of magnetic uh, field lines, which is right to left. And uh, my second finger is actually exiting the board or pointing towards the camera. So <clears throat> what that indicates is if I draw a cross-sectional area of the conductor again and I put a plus sign in there, what that means is um, we are going to have conventional current flow flowing out of that conductor. Another way to think of it is if you have the positive terminal of a battery in a circuit, the conventional current is going to be flowing out of the positive terminal. Now let's look at another case. We'll have another cross-sectional area of a conductor. Okay. And this conductor I'm going to bring down into the field and we're going to see if that uh, creates a different situation for us. So this conductor is going to be moving downward. So my thumb would be pointing in the downward position. My index finger would still be pointing right to left for my magnetic field lines. And as I bring it down into the magnetic flux, 
I uh, will have my second finger pointed into the board or it's going away from the camera. So to denote that, I would draw a circle with a negative sign in it. And if you think about a simple DC circuit, um, the uh, current would be flowing into the negative portion of the battery, which we would denote as a negative sign here because our current is flowing into the board. Now there is an easy way to remember the, the uh, Fleming's right hand rule with just using the names of the fingers that we have been describing here. So if I write down thumb, I write down first, and I write down second, if I take the M out of thumb, that stands for the motion. And some people might say movement, okay? The motion of the conductor, whether it's up or down, okay? Um, if I take the F in first, that means the field or the field lines, the direction that they're going, okay? So we were always pointing from right to left in that manner. And uh, on the second, the C stood for the current, the direction of the current. And remember, we are talking about conventional current flow there. Now remember, this rule applies when we want to induce a current into a conductor. It is very different from Fleming's left-hand rule, which is where we induce, we uh, have a current in a conductor in a magnetic field in order to move that conductor within that field. And we're going to study that as well. So look for that lesson on Fleming's left-hand rule. But this has been an application of Fleming's right-hand rule or the generator effect. Okay, well now we're back. I hope uh, that lesson about uh, Fleming's right-hand rule um, made sense. We're going to go ahead and apply it again here just for review. So we, again, have rotated 30 degrees. So we're showing an angle here of 30 degrees. And uh, we've, we're showing that we have 30 degrees uh, so far on our sine wave. And I have shown that the current is flowing this way, and we're going to use our Fleming right-hand rule to determine that. So uh, I'm going to look at the blue circle here, and I'm going to determine which direction that's moving, because we need to know the motion, correct, for our thumb to point in. So the blue circle is ultimately moving from left to right here as it, as it rotates. That's why I'm showing the thumb pointing to the right. My magnetic field lines are going from my north pole to my south pole, so they're going up. So I'm showing the first finger, uh, or the finger for the field lines going in the upward direction. And the, uh, the depiction that I have here is a little hard to tell, but that, that is at 90 degrees. That's what this little symbol here means, that that finger is at 90 degrees, which means that for this case, we're referencing the blue circle that the current will be coming out of the blue circle. And remember, we said at the board we would put a plus sign there. Much like the positive terminal on the battery, I will have current flowing out of that. And that is why I have de depicted the arrows pointing in this direction. So I'm flowing out of the uh, blue circle, the blue brush on our uh, slip ring and coming around in this fashion and uh, returning back to the red circle. Now we could actually do, um, we could have referenced the red circle to start with, and the red circle is moving in the opposite direction. It's moving from right to left, correct, as it's rotating. So we'd rotate our hand around. Uh, I don't have a graphic for this to put up on the, the display, but if you just uh, do this with your hand, if you put your thumb moving from right to left and your index finger or your first finger pointing in the upward direction your second finger is going to be pointed into the screen which means that my current flow is going to be coming around and flowing into my red circle here so either either way that you look at it you can determine with Fleming's right hand rule the direction of current okay now, uh, the other thing to note is I've rotated 30 degrees and my uh, 
amplitude here, the magnitude of the, um, the signal that I'm getting out here, it has not uh, reached its maximum potential yet because I am cutting magnetic field lines, but I'm cutting them kind of at an angle here. Do you see that? But imagine uh, two cars that are uh, ultimately going to hit each other. Um, it would be better for them to hit each other at a glancing angle than it would be at right angles. So we're kind of hitting hitting the traffic at a uh, a glancing angle here. Another way to look at it is if this is a stream and you're trying to cross the stream, if you uh, take this path, it's going to be a longer path for you to get across the stream, but you're going to have uh, to fight against that current um, less than you would if you were going just directly across. That's another way to look at it. We're going to rotate this another 30 degrees. So now we're at 60 degrees and I'm showing this rotation uh, is at 60 degree angle. And as you see, we're cutting more magnetic field lines with our arrow um, at a faster pace. And when we do so, we're generating more uh, current. Okay, I am showing this as voltage here, but the voltage and the current would be following each other in a purely resistive load. So we are, um, we're not to the top yet, um, we're still going at an angle. We're not at right angles yet to these magnetic field lines. We're still kind of have a glancing blow. It's, 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 um, it's uh, stronger. The, the, the effect of the magnetic field lines on this angle of rotation is going to be more, and that's why our amplitude uh, keeps going up here. And we obviously still, because we're still rotating in the same direction, we still have our current flow flowing in the uh, clockwise fashion. Okay, now we are at 90 degrees. And as you can see, just for an instant, my uh, line of uh, cutting across these magnetic field lines is at 90 degrees. And this is the maximum amount that we will ever be able to induce a current in this, um, in this coil of wire is at this angle, at a 90 degree angle. Because this is a circular function, and that's very important that we, we uh, grasp that, is a sine wave is actually a circular function. A lot of people kind of get that uh, 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 confused because uh, you study sines and cosines and those sorts of things in trigonometry, which people associate with the study of triangles. And it is, um, it does apply there, but a sine wave is a circular function. And so we are rotating in a circle here. And so we are generating a circular function of a sine wave. And so this, this is the maximum amount of uh, current that we're going to be able to induce because we are going uh, directly across those magnetic field lines. Again, using the river analogy, if you are crossing a fast moving river, and you go directly across. You don't take any sort of downstream angle. Um, you're, you're going to have the most difficult time crossing the river as compared to going with the current. Or you know, some people use the term going with the flow is to, to not resist people. So, and we have reached our maximum uh, voltage in this case, but uh, it will have also reached our maximum current in this simple circuit. And we're going to continue to rotate here. Um, but now, because we are uh, past that point of a maximum um, inducing current, we are now starting to go at this uh, angle where we're not going to cut as many magnetic field lines. Our magnitude here is going to be decreasing and we see that here and that is going to continue our current is still going to be in the same direction because if you look at our um, if you look at our rotation we are still going in that direction it, from for, with the blue circle we are still going from left to right and with the uh, red uh, uh, cross section here we're still going from right to left okay the only thing that's really changed so far is the uh, the magnitude of what we're what we're generating because our angle is starting to 
um, change in our magnetic field lines. Okay, again, um, still, um, <clears throat> still moving in the same direction, but our angle keeps um, getting steeper and steeper, closer to uh, parallel. And we know once we're at parallel, which we are now, we are going to induce no current in that coil. Now this is just for a split instant, because then we're going to reverse this whole thing. Remember, we started with the blue circle here on the left and the red circle on the right, and we've come halfway to our full circle. Um, but now we are going to, again, uh, rotate this 30 degrees, and it's going to be very, very similar to what we saw here. This is going to be uh, our 30 degree rotation like we saw over here, but our polarity has changed now. So now, um, as we reference this, <clears throat> we are now feeding current into the blue circle and out of the red circle. And that kind of makes sense because when the blue circle was over here and we were moving it in the upward direction, we induced a positive current coming out of the blue circle. Well, the same thing happens with the red circle here. And if you want to just um, pause the video for a moment and use your right hand rule where your thumb would be pointed from left to right, your first finger would be pointed up, and your second finger would be pointing out of the screen, just, just so you kind of can grasp that concept. Again, that is, um, that's what's happening here, and that's why we have an alternation in our current, hence the name alternating current. Okay, so we are going to continue to um, uh, rotate here, and we're going to find the exact same thing, just the polarity has changed, um, where our amplitude is going to increase until we get to where we're cutting these magnetic lines at the maximum amount of current that we'll be able to induce in that for a split second before it continues to rotate um, to decrease our magnitude. And we come around full circle <coughs> to where we are exactly where we were at the beginning. So our blue um, blue line and our blue uh, cross section is here on the left and our red cross section is at the right. So I'm going to go to our animation here and we'll just kind of watch that um, rotate as we talk about this just a little bit further. But what this um, I hope helps you understand is a alternating current or a sine wave is a circular function. Um, generators are basically rotating a circular object in a linear field, and that's why we get the sine wave that we do. The uh, current and voltage that is induced into that line is ever-changing in magnitude because the angles that we are um, hitting the magnetic field lines are always changing because, again, it's a circular function. This concludes part one. And I really would like you to um, not just jump into part two, but really to um, sleep on this and, and uh, digest just this concept and then come back and uh, study part two. So we'll see you in part two where we're going to discuss the measurement of alter alternating current. We'll see you then.